As you've probably heard me say like thousands of times here on the channel, Haswell i7s and Xeons are where it's at for budget gaming performance. They still hold up relatively well in 2023 and I suspect 2024 as well. And if you pair it with a reasonable graphics card like an RX 580 8GB or a 1660 Super, you've got a very good, capable, 1080p gaming PC on your hands right there. The i7-4770 has four cores and eight threads which will boost up to 3.9 gigahertz, eight megabytes of L3 cache, and it's built on the 22 nanometer process. The TDP rating of this processor is 85 watts, but I've never seen this locked i7 go above 65 in my testing, so it is actually pretty efficient. It also features the new at the time AVX2 instruction sets, which basically ensure that every single game and every single program will at least start on this processor. And it also has a very similar single thread performance to first gen Ryzen processors and they're still quite capable for gaming so this process has got to be quite good as well. So to find out if this 10 year old i7 still has what it takes to play games at 1080p in 2023 and 2024, I've tested it using 16 gigabytes of dual channel 1600 megahertz DDR3 memory using my Vega 56. All testing has been done at 1080p and for comparison purposes to see how much performance you might be losing, I've tested it against my i5-12400F. All games have been loaded on a crucial BX500 1TB SATA SSD for both systems, so let's see how the i7-4770 gets on. I've noticed testing Fortnite on the DirectX 12 API is a much better way of testing older processors like this i7. That is because DirectX 12 has a lot less CPU overhead. And to be fair, it was probably a good shout as the i7-4770 got 140 frames per second on average with a 1% low of 80 FPS. This is very playable performance in my opinion. And if you wanted to pair this with something like an RX 580, you'd be getting decent performance there. You are losing about 50% performance to a modern system like the i5-12400F though, as that got 210 FPS on average, with a 1% low of 152. So the 1% low is much improved with the newer processor as with the average frame rate as well, but both systems are totally playable. Counter-Strike 2 just has a way of just punishing old processors like this i7, and that stays true today. That is because 100 FPS on average with 61 FPS for the 1% low isn't the best competitive experience in the world, but then again, it is still very playable. And if you just wanna play it on a casual level, this performance is probably enough for you. Compared to a modern processor, you are losing quite a bit of performance as the i5-12400F got 199 FPS and the 1% low, to be fair, wasn't much better getting just 88 FPS. If it's a competitive experience you're after in Counter-Strike 2, I'd get a much newer CPU. GTA 5, despite its age, is actually quite CPU demanding. The i7-4770 got 78 FPS on average with a 1% low of 56 FPS, which in a nutshell is not bad performance at all. But when you compare it to the 12400F, there's a lot of performance lost, as that got 145 FPS on average with a 1% low of 118. So, so yes, GTA 5 on the older i7 is certainly playable, but the i5-12400F is on a completely different level. The Witcher 3 is a weird one at 1080p. It's insanely CPU demanding, even with a Vega 56, and that stays true today. 54 FPS on average with 35 FPS for the 1% low isn't particularly the best experience in the world, especially when you compare it to the modern i5, as that got 105 FPS and 82 FPS for the 1% low. So yeah, the i7-4770 has been absolutely decimated in this title. Moving back to an esports game in Rainbow Six Siege and the i7 does claw a bit of performance back here, getting 180 FPS on average with a 1% low of 113, which is, in my book, very playable even if you've got a 144Hz monitor. Then again, compared to the 12400F, that got 285 FPS on average with a 1% low of 198. So on the i7, you're good enough for a 144Hz experience, but on the i5, you're good enough for a 240Hz experience. So that's a lot of performance lost with exactly the same GPU. God of War is up next and the benchmarking pass I use in it is actually quite CPU demanding, but I think the i7 put up a decent fight here, getting 68 FPS on average with a 1% low of 47 FPS, which is not ideal, 
but to be fair, considering its age, it's not terrible by any means. The 12400F only upped this by 22% going up to 83 FPS on average, with a 1% low of 72. So the 1% lows are much better with the modern processor, but then again, I think most gamers wouldn't really care as long as they're getting 60 FPS on average, which is something the older i7 can do. Cyberpunk 2077 was a weird one today. That is because the old i7 got more frames per second on average than the 12400F, getting 59 FPS on average, whereas the 12400F got 57 FPS. The 1% lows were worse with the i7 getting just 38 FPS, whereas the 12400F got 43 FPS. But as we've seen from previous testing, when Cyberpunk's crowds are set to low, it's really not a CPU intensive game at all, and even a second gen i7 would have decent performance in this title. The last game we're taking a look at today is Horizon Zero Dawn and this was one of the closer games tested today as the i7-4770 got 79 FPS on average which is pretty decent performance and the 12400F got 88 FPS on average so that's only a performance delta of just 9 frames per second in favour of the modern i5. The 1% lows fared quite well with the i7 getting 53 FPS there whereas the 12400F got 65 FPS. So there's a bit of an improvement with both the average and the 1% lows in Horizon Zero Dawn with the modern processor. But just like God of War, I don't think most gamers are going to really notice or care about this. So compared to the 12400F, the i7-4770 is losing about 55% performance on average, which is not great. However, you might call me a bit of a madman for this, but I don't think it really matters that much. Most casual gamers will just care if their game runs and it runs relatively smoothly, so getting 60 FPS on average without it stuttering every two minutes. And that is something that this i7 can certainly do with a lot of relatively decent graphics cards. Yes, I wouldn't pair anything like an RTX 3080 with this processor, but if you wanted to pair something as high-end as an RTX 2060, I think that's a decent pairing, and that is a video which I made, which you can watch up here. So essentially what I'm trying to say is, yes, you are losing performance, but as long as it's playable, I think most gamers, they don't really care. But looking at games like Rainbow Six Siege and Fortnite, which are my de facto go-to esports games, they ran totally fine. They were good enough for a 144Hz experience, truth be known. And then you've got Counter-Strike 2, which is always a bit of a letdown on processors like this for some reason. It's just obscenely CPU demanding, and I'm not sure as to why. However, if you wanted to play Counter-Strike 2 competitively, I'd stay away from this processor. You've got to look for a much more powerful CPU with much better single thread performance. The AAA games fed very well on the i7-4770 with games like Cyberpunk even beating the 12400F with the average frame rate, despite the 1% lowers being a bit lower. And then looking at God of War, and Horizon Zero Dawn, performance was fine in them titles with the old i7. Because of the i7's performance, I think it is perfect for budget PC flips. Don't take my word for it though, I built a PC with this i7 and an RTX 2060 and it sold within two days. Yes, I know we're on the run up to Christmas, but yeah, that is pretty quick for a PC to be sold. I think this is one of the best value CPUs to use in PC flipping as well, as that i7 name carries a lot of weight. A lot of people that aren't really familiar with PC building that much probably know that the i7 is a good processor but they're not familiar with generations and stuff like that and it's not really misleading as it's still a decent CPU but as long as you pair it with a graphics card like a 1660 Super or maybe something as high end as an RTX 2060 you should sell that PC pretty quickly. That's what it's like in my local market obviously your local market might differ. However if you're planning on building a budget PC for yourself and you don't want to sell it I do recommend a different processor. Well, it, it's kind of the same, but it's a better value. That is the Xeon E3 1241V3. It's basically an i7-4770, but it has a slightly higher base clock at 3.5 gigahertz, and it's got the newer thermal interface material, so it's better at cooling, I suppose. The only drawback of it, though, is it might not be compatible with some motherboards, and it's got no integrated graphics, but if you're using your PC for gaming, you probably don't care about that anyway. And most importantly, it's cheaper than the i7-4770 by about eight pounds, but if you're shopping at this price point, every penny saved is 
every penny saved. I tested this processor on the channel and I also put it into my brother's gaming PC which has been paired with an RX 580 and it's had absolutely no problems with this processor and it's one I highly recommend at this price point. The reason why I don't recommend the Xeon for PC flipping even though it is a better CPU and it's also a better value CPU for that matter is because Xeon doesn't carry as much weight as the i7 name. People are more familiar with i7 compared to Xeon and that's just the fact of the matter. People are gonna buy what they're familiar with and that is probably going to be i7. So with all that being said, I arrive at the end of the video and the TLDR is, if you're building for yourself, get the Xeon, it's a better value processor in my opinion or if you've just got an i7 4770 lying around, it's still a great processor but if you're buying solely just the processor alone, maybe you're upgrading from an i5 or an i3, I'd say probably get the Xeon if it's compatible with your motherboard. For flipping on the other hand, the i7-4770 is probably one of the best value processors right now for low-end budget gaming PCs. So if you want to see a PC build with both the i7-4770 and the Xeon, you can watch both of them videos right up here. They might be right up your alley. And if you got this far into the video, I'd like to say thank you for sticking around this long and maybe leave a like if you liked it. With that being said, I'm going to leave this one here. And this is the last video of 2023, so... I hope you have a good new year and I hope 2024 is good for you.